What's up, y'all? We are back. This is episode 12 of the Milwaukee Brewers Out of the Park Baseball 25 series. We're here uh, November 23rd. We're about, I don't know, a week or so into the offseason. Uh, awards just finished up. Um, and this is a good spot to check in because, you know, we kind of dealt with our arbitration stuff. Edward Cabrera, uh, due for $4.8 million. I mean, he's been really good. So, like, I think it's a no-brainer, even... We have we have some money to spend uh, this off season, so we're, I didn't get to him, but I do want to extend him. Uh, DL Hall's a guy I'm still, you know, up in the air if I want to bring him back. Um, we'll see what's available on the trade market. Um, as you can see, uh, we re-signed everyone else besides Sean Roby, who uh, was was miserable in 29 plate appearances for us this season. Uh, you know, small sample size, whatever. He actually crushed AAA, but they were just going to non-tender him. Uh, he was set to make $2.6 million. Not really necessary to do that. And then Johan Rojas, also going to non-tender him. He was set to make $1.3 million. We have some other guys we like, uh, and he's also out of options. So um, kind of kills his usefulness, uh, quite frankly. Uh, we have a bunch of guys hitting free agency. My goodness. Alexis Diaz, uh, he lost some velocity and some stuff this offseason. Um, he still wants a pretty big contract. We're going to let him go, uh, although he had a great season for us. So we thank him for uh, how good he was uh, this season, but we're going to move forward without him. Uh, George Kirby, of course, had the spectacular playoff run for us, kind of put the team on his back. Um and he finished pretty high in the Cy Young race, uh, despite a 4-1-2 ERA. Um, and I think there's really good days for ahead for Kirby, and there's a chance we can bring him back. We'll see. Um, that's a big contract, and we're not really in position to do that. Uh, Garrett Mitchell, another guy we're going to lose this offseason. Um, really pr- unlikely we bring him back. Uh, he wants a big deal, you know, six years, $120 million, like, He's been a good player, but um, I think we can get value elsewhere. Uh, and then Christian Yelich finally uh, off the books, declined his option, obviously. So he'll be on his way out. Um, again, good career with Milwaukee, but just time to move on for him. Um, and then other guys, we have Matt Brash, who didn't even make the playoff roster because his ratings dip so much. Um, he'll hit free agency. Garrett Crochet, who was pretty big on the playoff run. I had a Really, really good postseason. Um, made four starts, didn't go more than two runs in any of them. Uh, so we're gonna miss him. He, we don't. We're not gonna get any um, qualifying offer for him, but he wants a big deal. Um, and I don't really trust him long term as a three pitch guy. Um, we got a really good performance in, from in the playoffs. He helped us win a World Series. So, you know, sometimes that's good enough where we can just say goodbye and you know he'll he'll get he'll get the bag somewhere. Um, so those are the guys hitting free agency. Uh, we'll have to figure out Hall. I'm still not sure what we're going to do with him. Uh, we do have a couple spots over in this rotation. I did re-sign Tanner Bybee. Uh, I-, I know he was pretty rough in the postseason. Did have a good start against Detroit, though. Uh, but his first two were not good. But, like, he was only asking for three years, eight per. Uh, team. We got him for a team option the third year. So, really, it's a two-year um, like 19 or $17 million deal, 16.8 million. Uh, if we don't take that team option, but I think there's, there's a ton of value in this deal, uh, as a number three starter and number four starter. Um, and he's been quite consistent, uh, throughout this save, you know, last year was his worst year, but I think if he gets the home runs under control, uh, he can be, you know, he, he could be just as good as he was the last few seasons. So we re-signed him. Uh, Bradley Blaylock will be back. I think we're going to give him a rotation spot. We'll see how this all plays out. Um, Carlos Rodriguez is a guy who will fight for a rotation spot as well. Uh, Hagen Smith will be in here. Luke Holman. Um, you know, there, there's there's a bunch of guys here. <laughs> None of them really um, intrigue me that much outside of Gavin Stone, obviously. You know, these are a bunch of like three, four, or five starters, not really a two. And Stone's not really a one either in my mind, so... Uh, we'd love we'd love to bring back Kirby. Uh, there's a chance we still can. Um, we'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Um, and then we'll go to the lab next. 
Uh, we could increase our ticket prices a little bit. I'm sure our fans are happy that we just won. Um, development Lab. Um, so you see, um, we have Jackson Cheerio here, strength and conditioning. He just missed a bunch of time, so I want to get him not fragile anymore. Um, he's excelling so far, uh, about a month in, so really good stuff there. Jefferson Kiro trying to improve his bat speed. Uh, Royce Lewis improving his plate discipline. You know, he, he's, he's, he's 29 at this point, but we have him under contract for a bunch of more years. So uh, if he can keep improving under that deal, uh, I think that's a good investment. Uh, he's frustrated at this point, though. Roderick Arias looking to improve his two-strike approach. Uh, so far, he's excelling. Um, really, the problem for him last year was the strikeouts. I mean, a 34% strikeout rate is not sustainable. If he can cut that down to, like, you know, the mid-20s, potentially. Um, and you're talking. Then you're talking. So, uh, he's excelling at this point. Magales, we're trying to improve his control. It's kind of the one weak part of his game at this point. Um, he'll, he's a guy who's going to compete for a rotation spot for sure and definitely could win one. He's excelling at this point. So, Get that control up. He's looking pretty good. Um, Viduri, you trying to improve his pitch arsenal. Oh, that's not the right guy. He just doesn't really have an out pitch. Um, he's, you know, going to be pretty good at keeping the ball on the ground. Uh, but I, I want to, you know, improve this stuff a little bit. So we're sending him there. He's frustrated at this point. Uh, Dave Kraus, uh, Bobby Barrels. <laughs> Dave Bobby Barrels Kraus. Um, we are sending him to improve his plate discipline. He's on track still early. Um, you know, if he can get on base and utilize his speed a little bit more, whew, he's going to be a potentially special player. And then Andy Pajes, uh, a guy who's under con team control for a few years, um, trying to improve his two strike approach, cut down on the strikeouts. You know, he, I think that was one of the big reasons that he struggled, uh, that and the, just the Babbitt pluck. He struck out 30% of the time, which was an increase of almost 5. It was an increase of 5% from last year. Uh, the walks ticked down quite a bit as well. So, um, yeah, it was just a tough season for Pies. I think he bounced back, though, and he's definitely in our plans for next year. Um, Dave Krause comes in at the 66 prospect um, in his first update. Um, Vince Jennings was a second-round pick last year. Uh, he's pretty high in the rankings as well at number 82. Um, Julian Ramirez, um, a international signing last year. Um, he slots in at number 31. Daniel Cabral still number three. Um, anyone new? Danny Sargent's been in that area for a little bit. I think he dropped down a few spots, though. Um, anyone new? David Aguilar is looking pretty good. Eric Becker's getting there. Josh Noth, another guy who's going to compete for a uh, rotation spot, but you know he's going to be out for. Uh, actually, he'll be back for the start of the year. This guy looks new. Uh, Juan Umenzor, a fifth round pick last season. Um, he's in our top twenty or thirty prospects. I never know how many this is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Okay, I, I was correct in saying in top twenty prospects. Uh, at least most of the time, I say that. Quintero still making his way up. He's 23 at this point. He he's he's likely to have a spot on this team this year. Um, this guy looks pretty good. He was a scout in discovery. Not bad. Uh, Maverick Rizzi, uh, another one of these like pretty good starters that could be a rotation arm. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're coming off the World Series. Obviously, we're we're gonna lose a bunch, of, <laughs> really a bunch of our guys. Like. This is not a small list of contributors here. You know, we're losing our closer, our ace, and our uh, our center fielder who's been quite good um, throughout his time with us. Also, a starter that we got at the deadline who was really good, AJ Puck. Uh, spoiler alert, he won a reliever of the year, so we're also losing him. Uh, yeah, he wants big bucks, so don't think we're going to be able to bring him back. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's a bunch of losses. Um, so we're going to have to figure out how to play around that. Do you want to check out Deal Hall's value? See if he has any at this point. He doesn't. God, he's just so, so disappointing after a couple really, really good years. Like his 2024 year, like I thought, okay, this is an ace. And then 2026 was really good after a disappointing 25. 
And then the last year is, years have just been really bad. Um, and yeah, there's there's no one really out here. So yeah, it's like do we do we non tender him? I don't know. We have a bunch of money to spend. It's not like we're like strapped for cash where six million dollars is gonna break us. Um, we have fifty million at this point. But like where is DL Hall fit in all of this? Like he's gonna Okay, he'll be gone. Shrizelski will be here. Cabrera will be here. Uh Efros is coming back. Uh Kate Smith will be back. Uh, hopefully he's a little bit better this year. Um and then all of these guys are gone, so like we have a spot for Hall here. And he's a lefty, you know, we kind of need a lefty. He still theoretically could be good. The Babbitt was really high last year. I'm going to bring him back. I think he can have a good year. It's a, it's a lot for a relief reliever flyer. That's pretty much what he is at this point. But, um, you know, we, 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 this is a pretty low investment um, position that we've, you know, none of these guys are really making any money. Shrizelski's making a bit. Um, Efros is making pretty much a league minimum. Edward Cabrera will be making a bit. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll bring back Hall as a reliever. Okay, so that's that. We're gonna head into awards. I did go through these kind of quick. Um, gold gloves. Check out the AL here in the NL. Carlos Correa wins at shortstop. Uh, an amazing season with him with the glove. Which is really surprising with the 65 range, but I guess the error in the arm, the double play, really make up for it. Uh, he had a great season. And, um, you know, the, I, I was looking through and, you know, I, there was thoughts about moving Correa after that first season where he was hurt. You know, I was like, is this guy really the dude at shortstop? Like, should we try to get out of this contract and upgrade? And one of the guys I wanted to get was Dansby Swanson. So uh, I had looked into how he was doing, and uh, he sucks. Uh, Okay, that's harsh, but he really does. Um, negative two war last year. Not a good defender anymore. Um, negative 2.9 zone rating. It sucks because uh, he was a really good player at the beginning of the save, but has fallen apart, uh, you know, while Correa continues to be a, a good player. So that, that worked out well. Uh, he wins a gold glove. Good for him. Jordan Walker wins in right field, I guess. Uh, PCA so good. They locked him up too. Good for them. Um, reliever of the year, Emmanuel Classe. Um, in a three-player three, three player race, bunch of those guys really close. Um, it looks like Bednar actually tied with him. Total points. Uh, I guess they just gave it to Classe because they like him a little bit more. Then AJ Puck wins 28 out of uh, 30 first place votes. Duran getting the only other two. I mean, Puck was insane. Um, he was hurt at parts in the season. He had his rough moments in the playoffs, but uh, wound up coming up, coming through big in that last game when we needed him in this victory. Um, you know, coming in relief of Crochet, and then, um, yeah, the, the, he was huge in that game. So he wins reliever of the year. Um, Nick Robertson, former uh, former Brewer, uh finishes four, fifth what is that fifth uh silver sluggers in the al check those out there in the nl uh i thought uh kiro might have a shot at catcher but gabby moreno had a crazy good season not surprising um but brock wilkin wins his first silver slugger over at first base i don't know if he was entirely deserving a 120 wrc plus is fine for first base I mean, you know it's good but um yeah, I mean, it wasn't his... I don't think it was as good as last year for him. I think last year he was a lot better. Drove in a lot more runs. Um, overall, was a better hitter. But he wins uh, Silver Slugger. Well-deserved. Uh, he's he's a good player. Zeke Tovar, still trying to get him on the team. Uh, it's not going well. Matt Shaw is playing shortstop, apparently. Uh Wow. Negative 9.2 zone rating. Uh, yeah, maybe you shouldn't play him at shortstop, but he's a good hitter. 
uh, wins the Silver Slugger over there. Michael Harris wins in center field. Uh, Jordan Walker in right field. So really unfortunate for Ronald Acuna. I mean, the dude had a crazy year and uh, not even going to get a Silver Slugger because Jordan Walker was really good. Um, rookie of the year, Mike Irish in the AL for the Guardians. And then uh, Zach York wins for the Phillies, but uh, Luis Lara finishes second. Uh, it must have been a really weak year. I mean, Lara had a decent year. Uh, also, I'll get to this injury in a second. Um, he had a good year, but like second place rookie of the year is pretty crazy. Um, this guy was good. Jackson Strong. Yeah, okay. It was a weak year uh, for sure. And honestly, Lara was the most valuable of these guys, according to War. Uh, I'm actually kind of surprised that Zach York beat him now that I'm looking at it. But that's uh, not a huge deal. So uh, we didn't win manager of the year. Um, MVP, or uh, Cy Young was Ricky Tiedemann. Reed Detmer is a dude we almost traded for early in the series when he sucked. Now he's really good. Is <laughs> um, a free agent after next season, so there's a chance, uh, you know, maybe we make a move for him. Um, yeah, we tried to trade for him after this season 25 and he's been a great starter since that point so uh, maybe we should have done that push a little bit harder and then uh, this one hurts <laughs> uh, not because Yamamoto won that's fine but Freddie Peralta former brewer had a crazy good year um, last year was a bit of a disappointment for him this year living up to the hype he was excellent Mackenzie Gore another guy that we had uh, just last season he finishes third. George Kirby finishes fourth, uh, which, again, is surprising, but um, did put up the war numbers you'd expect. Just the ERA wasn't quite there. Um, Gavin Stone finishes, uh, what is that, sixth? Uh, AJ Puck didn't get any votes, which I'm a little bit surprised by. And then AL MVP, Wyatt Langford wins. Bobby Witt finishes second. Um, check out the rest of the guys there. And then NL MVP, Jordan Walker winds up beating Michael Harris even after his uh, insane season. Um, Walker was just a little bit better. 9.1 war, won the gold glove out in right field. Um, Dylan Cruz got some votes as well. He had a great season. Nine war for him. Uh, I think a lot of that was must have been defense-driven. Yeah, he was a crazy good center fielder. Yeah, Dylan Cruz, total stud. Uh, Cunha finishes fourth. Uh, with his amazing season as well. Uh, then Juan Soto finishes fifth as a DH only. Really impressive. Um, you know, his range continues to drop. He's more of just strictly a DH at this point. Um, and then Tovar, Wood, um, Freddy Peralta finishes pretty high up ahead of Yamamoto. Uh, Cheerio finishes a little bit farther down the ballot. He had a great year when he was out there. Uh, then we had Brock Wilkin getting some votes, and Jefferson Kiro also getting some votes. He had an amazing year. Okay, so that's that. Uh, we're going to skip ahead to free agency. We'll come back for that. All right, so we're back, and um, it's January 1st, 2029, so just moved into the new year. Um, you can see one big move that we did make was bringing back George Kirby. Um, it was a little bit more than I wanted to pay for, but you know, we had the flexibility long-term with Yelich gone and, um, it's $36 million for seven years. It's a pretty wild contract, but the reason that I like this is, uh, he's been incredibly durable throughout the save, uh, has not missed a start as he had a, he's had like a couple minor injuries, but you know, which is about as durable as it gets. Uh, I think his skill set will age well um, with his control movement all pretty good. Um, yeah, I think he's going to age well, and I think this could be a good contract even if he's 37 years old at the end and not the best player at that point. But, you know, if we can uh, win a couple World Series um, while he's here, that'd be amazing. Um, besides that, there hasn't been a ton of movement. I have been... Uh, God, searching every corner of this league for any kind of trade. There's some interesting guys in the block. Um, Matt McLean is a guy that I've looked at, and I've kind of pondered the idea of bringing him in and uh, moving Royce Lewis to left field. He's just some pretty good ratings out there, so I think he could definitely handle it. The bat's good enough to be in a corner. Um, so that's something I've pondered. Um, 
Bo Naylor, another guy. We don't need a catcher, but he has some third base ability. The arm's pretty good over there. Um, and he wouldn't cost a ton. Uh, he's a free agent after the year, so they'd be a rental. Uh, same with McLean. Um, Josh Lowe's another guy that I'm looking at. Um, he's just kind of underwhelming offensively. Uh, he's not, you know, I think we have guys like that on our team already. Um, say Suzuki, another guy that I'm looking at, but he's making a bit of money for the next couple of years. Don't really want to get involved in that. Um, you know, he's, I mean, maybe, maybe he could play third base theoretically in a pinch, but he's more of just a corner outfielder. Um, Josh Young, I jumped, I'm just seeing him added to the block here. He's not really any good anymore. So, you know, we, we, we have a massive hole at, in the corner outfield spot. Um, I don't know if we have anyone that I trust enough. Uh, you know, Lara will get a crack at it. I also didn't go over what his injury was. I realized uh, I, I alluded to it, um, but never actually brought it up. So it was one of those weird uh, off-season incidents. Uh, where the heck was this? This must have been somewhere up here. Here we go. Luis Lara has an accident. Uh, up to two, action, two months with a torn quad. Uh, racing his teammate during practice, so that's great. Uh, tears his uh, tears his quad, uh, doing something that we would do in like middle school in the and and recess or something. But anyway, whatever. He'll be back for the start of the year. It's not a huge deal, but you know it, it does hurt his injury proneness. Now he's fragile. That's amazing. Um, so one of those things. Uh, just can't do anything about it. But yeah, we're missing. Uh, a corner outfielder or third baseman. I think we can, you know, or second baseman. Uh, I think Lewis has some defensive flexibility we can work with, uh, move him to a corner outfield spot potentially uh, in the short term. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see if there's even anything out there. I've looked at every team, every player, trying to make some kind of an upgrade. Uh, there's not really much out in free agency that I liked. Uh, I have a couple offers out here. Uh, Joe Ryan won't sign, um, but I have like an offer for Kyle Hurt. Most of these are pitchers. Uh, Alex Vesio looking to bring him back. A um, couple well, minor league deals. We have Jose Siri um, offered him a minor league deal. Potential outfielder type. Uh, Daniel Palencia, another nice player. Hurt Vesia. I like Zach Jackson. Um, Jeremiah Estrada. He's not bad. So I'm signing those guys to minor league deals. Um, Joe Ryan, they're kind of pushing, you know, what I'm willing to spend on him. He hasn't been good in a few years. He's mostly pitched out of the bullpen. Um, you know, he, he hasn't been bad, but I think we have guys that can be just as good as this who have options that we can kind of play around with. Um, and he gives up a lot of home runs, which I don't like because those guys have kind of screwed me recently. Um You know, I, I don't even, <laughs> I don't really have any idea of what to do here. Um, Camposano, Camp, I mean, Jordan Alvarez would be sick, but, like, he just cannot play the corner outfield. He's basically Juan Soto. A little redundant. Um, you know, Arroz Arena I thought about, but is he really any better than the guys that we have? I mean, maybe. Spark plug, I mean, that's cool. He's 33 and wants a four-year deal. I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> Joey Gallo makes sense um, as a guy we can kind of throw at the bottom of our order, maybe run into one once in a while, but Andy Pahas is kind of the same player. I made that kind of comparison when we traded for him, and that's kind of not really proven to be true. Uh, he's a little bit better ball, bat-to-ball skills than Joey Gallo. Um, but, you know, everything else is pretty similar. <laughs> um I mean, it makes some sense. Does he have, like, any crazy splits? Um, I mean, against righties, he could potentially, you know, bat 200 and hit 50 home runs over a full season, but... I don't know. I was kind of comfortable running out Blake Perkins, uh, who we quietly signed to a minor league deal uh, in the middle of last season uh, and hit pretty well in AAA. Um, you know, he was on the team a few years back, played pretty well. Um, and went to Atlanta, didn't do well. You know, he's an option. Um, Anthony Gutierrez, another guy that I like. Um, Edward Quintero. I, th I, th 
I honestly think we'll probably just wind up running with uh, these four guys out there and kind of see what sticks in left field or center field, wherever we choose to put Cheerio. Um, I feel like, it, yeah, Garcia can play a little bit of corner outfield. Pacheco can play a little bit of corner outfield. Um, it'd be cool if Wood could, but he can't. Um, Brock Wilkin, can you play? He could play some corner outfield if we need it. Uh, and then we have Royce Lewis. So, like, you know, I think this will play itself out. But I would like to bring in some kind of actual player at that position who's a lefty, preferably. Um, you know, I mentioned the Matt McLean thing. Um, he's with the Reds. It wouldn't take a ton, but it would take giving up a guy that I really like, and I'm not. I don't know if I'm ready to give up on him. I mean, this is this was kind of a one for one that they would do essentially. Uh, yeah, we'll throw in someone else. <sighs> yeah, so Shabazz is the guy that a lot of teams like. Uh, he was a 12th round pick in 2027. He doesn't throw hard, but has high work ethic, high intelligence. Just a reliever with that stamina. Uh, it could be a really good one. Um, so he's a guy that I've looked into adding to a lot of trades. Um, to kind of try to get something done. Bryce Rayner, also another guy we can give up. He's 23. Uh, hasn't really hit at any level. Good defensive player, but that's about it. Um, definitely not ready to give up on Holman by any, by any means. Um, I like Blaylock. Um, Roderick Arias is like a dude that teams love. Like he's up there with like our top guys, uh, in value. So I really like him too. So I'm going to hold on to him, but you know, something to monitor, um, you know, if, if he winds up sucking uh, and we could have sold high on him, it might be like one of those big mistakes that, you know, we could have could have got out of him. Uh, that tends to happen with me. I prospect hug a ton. Um, I get attached to these guys, you know. It sucks, but whatever. Um, yeah, so McLean is definitely a guy I like. You know, it, I doubt they'd do it. Would they trade Edwin Arroyo on that cheap ass deal? Oh my god. Um I mean, just theoretically if we threw in Arius, yeah, okay, they're not giving him up. Um Yeah, again, like I've kind of searched every corner of this league and there's really no one out here that, that makes any sense. I mean, De La Cruz, he's not making a ton of money. Could fit in at third base if they're willing to give him up. I doubt they are. Um, we're a little bit closer. You know, like... There's a world that this trade works um, without giving up Arias. So, a couple prospects that I'm willing to give up. Uh, Sam Zaher... Just a guy who's a long way away. Uh, has some upside, but um, not like I'm not a huge fan of him. Um, Tommy Vargas, I still believe in, even though I probably shouldn't. Um, Jorge Flores is just a little redundant with dudes that we have. Uh, Bryce Rayner is a guy that teams like a lot. Yeah, it's going to take one of those big guys. And, you know, De La Cruz is kind of the perfect player for this. Uh, that kind of what we're looking for with a really good glove at third um, excellent speed good hitter um, but he hasn't been he hasn't proven to be that good of a hitter in the save um, definitely like his one of his lower uh, outcomes that I've seen um, had a good year last year and uh, in 24 but besides that he's been you know league average hitter league average player okay so I'm going to hop off looking for some more trades. Um, yeah, the big news is George Kirby coming back. Um, and there really hasn't been any other movement, essentially. So, um, checking the lab. Uh, things aren't going quite as well as they were previously. Uh, Cheerio on track still, but no longer excelling. Kiro, Lewis, uh, frustrated. Arias and Mengele's are doing well, though, on track. Um, and Bobby, Bobby Barrels Krause. Uh, on track to improve uh, or excel in his plate discipline. Um, Viduri and Pajes are frustrated at the moment. So that's that. Um, international is coming up. We have a bunch of cheap guys scouted. I just don't really like any of these players. I mean, 
Like, is this guy even worth maxing out my international or should I go for a bunch of these, you know, low demand guys and sign all of these guys? So I think that's probably the route we'll go. Um, I did scout him just in case, you know, we can get him for 2.6 million. That'd be sweet. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going to keep moving forward. We'll come back with another update soon. All right. So it's February 6th, about a month after uh, we last checked in. Uh, we just finished up our international uh, amateurs. So we signed three guys. Uh, Jorge Alba uh, was the cheapest of the bunch, but high work ethic, high intelligence. Has three pitches. Uh, the fork ball is interesting. Whatever. It was $150,000. I kind of had money left over. Um, so we signed him. And then we also got Lazaro Pardo. Um, who was not really highly sought after. Um, so we wound up getting him for 600000 a really good player, potentially. Um, so yeah, that was our second signing. And then our first one and the biggest one, um, and it, it just worked out really nicely. Um, kind of how we picked him up. Where the heck did he go? It's probably one of these ones that I already looked at. Yeah, okay. So we wound up signing... Elder Fresca Hilo. Fres Fresquilo. <laughs> this is the guy that I really wanted. Uh and we wound up getting him for four million. So that was under like the max. Um, which allowed us to sign two extra guys. Defense is good enough for a cute stick catcher, and the offensive upside is really uh really promising, uh, with high work ethic. Um, we'll see how he turns out, but uh, a good signing for under the max, um, in my opinion. So, pick up three guys. Um, and also the cool thing about um, for Hilo, I don't know how the Fresk, Fresk Hilo, Frescolo, Frescolo is uh, he's already 18 and pretty far along. So, he's going to go right to the Dominican League. Um, very excited for him. And uh, yeah, his farm system uh, kind of. You know, we're third right now. We've graduated a few guys. Um, we have some really exciting guys. Cabral uh, slowly making his way through the system. And I mean slowly, but this is kind of what happened with um, oh, the guy we had the Marlin save where he just could not get out of rookie ball. And all of a sudden, he just blew up one day and was all of a sudden major league, like the best player of all time. <laughs> Um, and I have been playing that offline just cause you know, it's, it's fun to continue that save and put him out doing videos on it. And, uh, he's actually wound up getting hurt a lot, which is unfortunate, but, um, but yeah, he, he's still a really good player. Um, him and Watkins, I know in order Watkins, uh, that name sticks with me for some reason. I can't think of the shortstop's name, uh, but they're both really good players. Um, we could, we have David Krause, really excited for him. Uh, Vince Jennings, man, if this dude works out, this would be insane. Uh, I have my doubts if it will, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, farm system's looking good is, is my point. Uh, that catcher will probably slot in somewhere in our top, our top five prospects or so, I would imagine. So, um, we did have a scouting update. Unfortunately, Strzelski lost a lot of velocity, um, did also lose some movement stuff. So, you know, he went from basically this pitcher to this pitcher, not quite the same guy, but, He'll still have a spot in our bullpen uh, for now. Um, yeah, we signed a bunch of other guys. Alex Vesia, we did wind up picking him up. Uh, we picked up Kyle Hurt, who I also like. Um, probably not a starter with his control issues, but as a reliever, dude could be legit. Um, yeah, I, I think we have a ton of arms here. Uh, kind of throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks. Oh, also, I didn't mention, uh, <laughs> we ended up signing Brett Beatty. Um and I was looking around kind of how to fill that last roster spot. And um, you know, I was thinking about a platoon guy. So Brett Beatty was out there. Um, has some, you know, moderate splits. He's not horrible against lefties uh, relative to his right-handed ability. But um, he's going to start at third base uh, against righties. We'll have Arias at third base against lefties. And then we'll have a platoon with Blake Perkins or, you know, Gutierrez or Quintero, whoever wins that spot. Uh, and Lara out in left field or center field, depending on what we do with Cheerio. Um, and yeah, this lineup's pretty complete at this point. Um, I don't think we really have any other big moves to make offensively. The The depth is pretty good. We got guys like Pacheco, who has an option to your left. Garcia can play a role on this team. Vera, he's okay. 
in a pinch. Uh, is he out of he might be out of options. Yeah, he's out of options. So we'll see if he makes the team. Bryce Rayner is a guy who's a good defensive player. Um, you know, Matthew Woods, a guy I've looked at trading this off season. I just don't really. There's not enough out there that that really piques my interest. Um, I had one trade kind of lined up with the Red Sox uh, for Andres Jimenez. He has one year left on his deal, um, and then a team option for $23 million, $0 buyout, so it would just be a rental most likely. They just wanted a ton for him. Like They wanted me to give them um, Wood. Where is he? Matthew Wood. Obviously, we can't afford that, so they wound up having them t- chip in. It was $10.5 million. Now it's going to have to be more because we signed Beatty, so it would have to be literally his entire contract. Um. Or like eighty percent of it. That's a good guess. Yeah, and then you know it just wasn't gonna work out. So we're gonna we're gonna roll with what we have offensively. The pitching I'm feel pretty comfortable with with Kirby coming back and uh, yeah, spring training starting in a couple days. Development lab update. That's not good. <laughs> so, God, it looked so good at the beginning, and now uh, at least Kraus improved, Mengele's improved his control. I mean, that's good stuff, but. Unfortunate. Uh, really unfortunate. Oh, Pajes, two strike approach. Let's go, dude. Hold it for one more day. <laughs> uh, so, Cheerio didn't improve his durability. Man, he was excelling for like the longest time. That really sucks. Um, Kiro didn't improve. Uh, Lewis didn't improve. Uh, we got Mangalas to improve his control. That's really good. Uh, I don't really see where the upgrade came, but that's okay. Uh, Viduri didn't improve his pitch arsenal, and then David Krause improved his eye. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> that is a beautiful thing right there. Going up to a 60 potential. Really exciting. Uh, and then Pajes. The Ks. Uh, noticeable improvement to avoid strikeouts. Cool. Um, so with Krause, the, the outstanding usually has... Um, Something else that improves. So, not only his current eye better, I think he increased his ceiling too. Okay, that's all that was. Um, then Mangala's good change in his control and improved command. Shalom. Okay, cool. Very good. So, we got three out of eight. Uh, it's not the worst thing in the world. Um, I guess at my spring training rosters. We'll come back for opening day uh, and finish out this episode at that point. All right, so we're here at the official opening day. Uh, our opening day isn't until about a week from now, I think. Um, so we get some up to that. Um, the minor league season will be starting, so I should make sure I have enough dudes at each level. Pitching's a little thin in AAA. Um, uh, I have any older guys? Sure, I'll call up these three. Go to AAA. Uh, then we're a little thin at Double A. I think I think uh, A ball is gonna have yeah a ton of dudes. <laughs> so let me call up all these twenty five year olds to Double A. Call up all the twenty four year olds. I usually am more precise than this. Okay. A bunch of those guys uh, are actually can't be in this level. They have to be in Double A. That's fine. Um, Okay, so double A is 21. High A is 17. It's about borderline. A ball has 18. My rookie levels are good. Um, I did do some promotions and demotions before before the, uh, the beginning of the offseason, but um, you know, I usually don't have to like like to have 20 year olds in the Dominican League. So I'll send all these guys if they're able to go. Okay, this guy these guys will have to go to A. Okay, good enough. Um, Again, usually I'm more precise than that, but it's just roster fillers, essentially. Um, Those levels look okay. A lot of catchers in double-A. Dave Krause is going to be fast-tracked through high-A, so I'm not too worried um, about our double-A team because Krause will be up with them. Uh, Noah Sheffield, he hasn't played too much. Um... Yeah, this is a pretty weak level for us. Uh, Luis Pena, only, uh, I guess he's 22. He's been in our system forever. Um, finally, up in high A this season. He has a little bit of upside. Um, 
This guy can go up to high A. Okay, he has to go to double A. All right, so that's good enough. Our levels are pretty set. So the opening day roster, we're going to have uh, these five guys in the rotation. Kirby, Stone, Bybee, those guys aren't too surprising. Blaylock was, had the inside track for a job because of how well he pitched down the stretch and had a great spring. So pretty much a no-brainer to have him as our four. And then Hagen Smith was spectacular um, in about, what is that, 10 and two-thirds innings. Uh, really, really good preseason for him. So he would get the fifth starter spot to start. Uh, the bullpen, I'm going to have D.L. Hall start as our closer. He had a really excellent spring, struck out a ton of dudes, um, had an ERA of one, you know, in like 10 or so innings, but, you know, still good stuff. Kate Smith, Alex Vessia will be our eighth and seventh inning guys, respectively, um, to start the season. Then we'll have Carlos Rodriguez, Kyle Hurt, who we signed to a minor league deal this offseason, or no, major league deal, sorry, um, Edward Cabrera, Shuzelski who did lose some stuff, but um, I still think he's okay for now. He's a free agent at the end of the year anyway. And then Scott F. Ross will make the team out of spring. Uh, he's out of options, I believe. Yeah, he's out of options, so I still like him. He'll make the opening day roster. Um, notable uh, guys left off the team. Um, Frank Oshel had a really nice spring. I just didn't have a spot for him. He has option years. So he was left off. Uh, Maverick Rizzi's a guy in our 40 man. Didn't quite make it, uh, but did have a good spring. Um, Luke Holman was like the last guy caught. He was really good in his four starts. Just didn't have a spot for him. You know, that's kind of the name of the game. Viduri was okay. Uh, had a couple rough outings, but he still has some upside. Didn't make the team, though. It was always an outside shot. Uh, him and Mengelez would make the squad, but, you know, both guys who showed some stuff during spring. Um, then offensively, um, I guess the only real surprising guys would be Blake Perkins, but he's on the 40 man at this point, a role Vera out of options, um, but had a really solid spring. Um, so he winds up making the team. We traded away Will Banfield, uh, who was a guy on our 40 man out of options. Um, and we wound up getting, um, here we go. We wound up getting this guy, Josh Sarnacki. Um, interesting guy. 24 years old. You can see he has no experience. Um, he just entered the league from an independent league. Um, I don't know even know what that means. I've never seen it before, but he has four option years, not even uh, three option years, not even Rule 5 eligible yet. So a guy who can stick in our system, maybe get called up at some point. Um, guy's not bad. Anyway, um, we have Kiro, Wilkin, Lewis, uh, Beatty, and Arias will platoon at third. We have Correa at short, and then uh, Perkins and Lara will platoon in left field. Churio will be in center, Pajas in right, and then Soto DHing. Um, see the lineups against righties there, and then lineups against lefties, pretty similar, uh, minus those two guys switching in and out. Um, okay, so really excited for this season. Uh, I think we have championship aspirations once again uh but we'll see how things played out also you see reed detmer starting for new york there i was freaking pissed at this one so <laughs> the day that he so he got traded to the mets from the angels the day that he got traded we got an offer from the angels i totally would have accepted <laughs> i forgot what it was uh, i might be able to dig it up late in my emails um can i search Detmer. I I actually didn't realize that was a uh, feature. Yeah, so I got this trade offer. Um, it was Reed Detmer's for Eric Becker. I don't know if I would have done this in hindsight. Um, Shabazz, who's kind of a nothing player. And then Sam Zahar, a guy I was looking to trade. Um, so that was the trade that was offered to me. And then they freaking, same day, I didn't even get a chance to respond. Uh, they went and flipped Reed Detmer's to, um, to the Mets for Colin Houck, not very good. Uh, and Willie Fannis, who, whatever. Uh, it just sucks because I really want to read Detmers, and I think he's going to have a good year. He's a free agent after the season. There's a chance we can sign him or something, but uh, disappointing. Um, and I mean, I, yeah. They're not going to give uh, Detmers up at this point. 
yeah, it's going to take a lot. So anyway, we'll face Reed Detmers here on opening day against the Mets. Uh, George Kirby, who we uh, re-signed in the offseason to a massive deal, um, hoping to lead this team back-to-back championships, following up on the 28 World Series win. Uh, 2029 starts now, March 30th. George Kirby against Reed Detmers. Brewers, Mets, let's do it. We lose one nothing. three hits for the offense. Great start from Kirby, but Detmer shuts us down. Um, three hits as a team coming from Churio, Lewis, Wilkin, not much else. Three Ks for Arias in this one. Blake Perkins struggles at the bottom of the order, so tough start to the year there. Gavin Stone will be on the mound for game two. Uh, we have a development update. So Tanner Bybee loses a little bit, not anything crazy i actually kind of like his outlook still his, his potential movement increased but uh his potential just i guess his overall just dropped um manuel rodriguez is still a guy I like uh, as a potential little, uh reliever out of the bullpen joey bart's still hanging around as a captain down in triple a so this is the guy they actually wanted in that trade uh, the detmer trade he gets a little bit of a boost. Actually, just getting it was a decrease. Um, Von Necker, this guy was a seventh round pick once upon a time. Um, coming along decently as a 22 year old. Uh, okay, this is where things get a little bit more interesting. Tommy Vargas, potential power decreases. See if he ever works out. Uh, Luis Pena, guy we saw recently when we were doing demotions, promotions. Uh, Chase Udo, a guy that I liked, sixth round pick. He uh, declines, unfortunately. Uh, at least his potential does. His um, overall goes up, or his current goes up. Spencer Browning, still a guy that I like. Um, he gets a increase across the board. Very good. Uh, Rocky McKendry, once upon a time, an 11th round pick. I guess that was not that long ago, 2027. Um, Steven Galman was a 7th round pick in that same draft. Um, he hasn't really done anything yet. Anyway. Uh, oh, we should also go through prospects. So, um, Prince Frescahilo. Uh, comes in at number 81, our sixth rank prospect at this point. Um, see our other guys up here. No real changes. Um, Viduri falls down a few spots. Uh, Mengelez falls down to 133. Um, a lot of that's probably the international guys signing and stuff like that. Um, Tommy Vargas falls out of the top 200. David Aguilar, same story with him, even though I still like him. Um, anyway, game two. Gavin Stone, Tyler Glass now. We lose 4-2. Offense really struggling early. Um, Gavin Stone, not a great start. Kyle Hurt pitches well out of the pen, though. Um, so game three, we'll have Walker Powell. Um, not the most impressive guy in the world, but against Tanner Bybee. And a 7-4 to victory. Um, okay, I have to pause this because I have bacon on the stove. I will be back. All right, we're back. Uh, finish out this episode. So Tanner Bybee wound up pitching pretty well in this game. Six and a third, three runs. Give two home runs. You know, he's that's been an issue for him. Uh, his last handful of starts. Uh, Edward Cabrera, D.L. Hall, finish it out. Uh, we're able to salvage one out of three against the Mets uh, to open up the season. Um, Soto had a couple RBIs, a couple hits. Uh, looks like he had a home run in the second, a two-run shot. Uh, also walked a couple times, so... Um, you know, not a great start to the year, but um, I'm actually curious how Blaylock and Smith do um, in these two starts. We're going to sim through these as well. May as well. I'm not sure how long this episode is at this point, but no, I don't think it's too long. Um, not like it really matters either way. Um, do we win 5-3? Blaylock looks like he pitched well. Six and a third, two or one run. Vessia came and gave up a few, but uh, Deal Hall, another good uh, appearance in relief. Churio had four hits in this one. Um, Perkins a couple of hits as well. That's good to see. Brett Beatty uh, looks like he drove in a run, two hits. 
He's trying to see if he had a home run. Uh, looks like Soto, Correa, and Beatty all had doubles in this one. And then uh, Hagen Smith making his first start of the year. And a 3 nothing loss. Looks like it was a late game push by them. Uh, Emmanuel Rodriguez, two-run home run, the ninth off Scott Efros. Uh, he gave three runs in two innings. But Hagen Smith, a great start to open up his season. Carlos Rodriguez, good in relief. Efros, not good. Um, offensively, just nothing going at all. Uh, seven hits, no runs pushed across. Tough to see, but... Uh, we open up the season two and three, and that'll be the end of this episode. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you guys next time uh, for the deadline um, draft episode, uh, first half of the year. Uh, yeah, we'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.